President Joe Biden wants the rich to pay their fair share by stopping tax evasion. His solution? Have the IRS monitor bank transactions. Is that really true? Welcome to America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. And did you know that half of everyone who watches this show isn't subscribed? Do us a solid and hit that subscribe button. And if you already have, thank you. Also, double check to make sure you're still subscribed because YouTube has been secretly unsubscribing people. Now, President Joe Biden has big plans, huge ones. He wants to improve the economy infrastructure, education, social welfare, climate change, the list goes on. And it all rests on a three and a half trillion dollar spending bill with large amounts of money going to social welfare and climate change initiatives. Now three and a half trillion dollars might sound like a lot of money to you uneducated simpletons out there. But Biden says the three and a half trillion dollar plan will actually cost zero dollars from the man who says inflation is temporary and the administration that believes inflation and supply chain issues are only high-class problems. I mean, what does a bag of potatoes cost these days anyways? A hundred dollars? Thousand? I don't know, and I don't care. I'm not out of touch. You're out of touch. So how does Biden plan to get a three and a half trillion dollar spending bill to cost zero dollars? Creative math. Lawmakers are certain to play all sorts of budget games, to achieve that mythical zero within the 10-year budget framework. Budget games! Sounds fun. But that's not all. The White House is focusing on getting the rich elite to pay their fair share. And if there's anyone we can trust to go after the rich elite, it's the rich elite of Congress. You see, rich people, not the ones in Congress, don't pay their fair share in taxes. According to the Department of Treasury, the rich skimp out on about $600 billion worth of taxes a year, what's called the tax gap. This means approximately $7 trillion of lost tax revenue over the next decade. Well, see, if you close the tax gap, that will cover Biden's bill no problem. But how do you close the tax gap? Give more power to everyone's favorite government agency, the IRS. The Treasury Department wants the IRS to review every account above a $600 balance or with more than $600 of transactions in a year. <laughs> Soon those fat cats with more than $600 in their bank account will finally pay their fair share. And don't worry, it applies to both business and personal accounts, so no one will be left out. In May, the Treasury Department announced Biden's proposal to create a comprehensive financial account information reporting regime. I love regimes. And Biden says it will finally give the IRS the power it so desperately needs. It will give the IRS the resources it needs to keep up with the lawyers and accountants and the super of the super wealthy. Finally, the super wealthy won't be able to get away with their extravagant $600 purchases. Even better, it can go after all those rich Americans who make untaxed income on side hustles. I'm talking nannies, housekeepers, DJs. Okay, maybe not DJs. But these people make up what's called the underground or shadow economy. Some estimates say that makes up 12% of the US GDP, almost two and a half trillion dollars. Did you know 91% of nannies reported being paid under the table? as many as 97% of household workers are too. These disgusting elites can't keep getting away with this. Fortunately, Biden's plan could end all this unreported income. If passed and signed into law, the proposal is expected to go into effect after December 31st, 2022. But hey, wait a minute. Fact checkers are saying Republicans are mischaracterizing this. It greatly exaggerates reality. So is there something we're missing about millionaire politicians empowering the IRS? Or after the break. Welcome back. Unless you didn't see an ad because YouTube demonetized us. Again. 
If you want to make sure we can keep making this show, all it takes is as little as a dollar per episode on the crowdfunding website Patreon. That's patreon.com slash America Uncovered. So fact checkers are saying claims about the IRS monitoring bank accounts over $600 exaggerates reality. For example, here's how a local news station reported it. President Joe Biden's proposal would have, have banks send customer information to the IRS for any transaction of $600 or more. Any transaction? That's what conservative Washington Examiner says. And it's being echoed by Republican politicians. That means any time an American pays a bill, makes a deposit, transfers funds, or makes a purchase of $600 or more, their bank, credit union, or financial institution would be forced to report that data to the IRS. And according to multimillionaire Republican Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, that would cover monthly rent or mortgage payments, gun purchases, and PayPal or Venmo transfers. So this sounds like a huge invasion of privacy. But wait, that's not true, according to President Biden. It would ask just for two pieces of information from the banks of these folks that amounts, the amounts that come into their bank accounts and what amounts <clears throat> go out of their bank accounts so that the wealthy can no longer hide what they're making and they can finally begin to pay their fair share of what they owe. Just two pieces of information. You see? It's not a huge invasion of privacy. It's just a small invasion of privacy. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is also trying to dispel misinformation. Does this mean that the government is trying to peek into our pocketbooks if Absolutely. you want to look at $600 transactions? Absolutely not. I think this proposal has been seriously mischaracterized. Um, the proposal involves no reporting of individual transactions of any individual. All that's involved in this proposal is a few aggregate numbers about bank accounts, the amount that was received in the course of a year, the amount that went out in the course of the year. If somebody reports an income of $10,000 and they had $3 million um, go out of their checking account, that tells the IRS that's a that's an individual you might audit. Oh, okay, that makes sense. It's not every transaction, just a total at the end of the year. I mean, yeah, it would be pretty suspicious if you only reported 10K income, but had $3 million going out of your account. <laughs> huh. Though I wonder why they set the threshold to just $600. I mean, we all want to make sure America's nannies are paying their fair share. But might this still affect a lot more than just the super wealthy? More after this final commercial break. And we're back. The Biden administration is trying to convince everyone that, hey, giving the government more power to look at your bank accounts is totally fine. Treasury Department officials have said that fears of increased audits on middle-class Americans are unfounded after the Biden administration promised to not increase audits on anyone earning less than $400,000 annually. Yeah. And Biden is known for keeping his word. After all, if you've done nothing wrong, you don't have anything to worry about. Hmm, where have I heard that one before? Oh yeah, when the government was pushing the Patriot Act. That only targeted terrorists. Except we learned the massive data center the government built to monitor terrorist activity actually records the phone conversations of all Americans. Obviously, people are freaking out about this new IRS monitoring uh, regime. 141 House Republicans wrote to the IRS, Nancy Pelosi and Janet Yellen, saying not only would such an overly comprehensive IRS database require significant resources to build, maintain, and protect, but it would make the personal financial data of millions of Americans vulnerable to attack. What? When has government stored data on millions of Americans ever been vulnerable to attack? According to the New York Times, banks are being deluged with calls, emails, and in-person complaints from both savers and small business owners worried about the proposal. Which leads me to the most disturbing part of this whole story. Banks are totally against this. A bunch started tweeting the hashtag, keep my banking private. 
and over 50 state bankers associations signed a joint letter with the American Bankers Association to Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi and Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy. It cites significant concerns regarding the privacy of personal financial information, cost of implementation, and impact on average Americans. One of the associations says that it even raises concerns about Fourth Amendment protection from unreasonable searches by the government. We have serious Fourth Amendment concerns for our bank customers. They don't have probable cause. In effect, the policy makes most Americans suspected tax cheats until proven innocent to the satisfaction of the IRS. So the concerns about privacy, constitutionality, all that is valid. But government overreach isn't what I was talking about when I said this is the most disturbing part of the story. No. The most disturbing part of the story is it's banks versus the IRS. Who do you even root for? Although one thing I've noticed is it seems to be mostly small and mid-sized banks who are concerned. The new compliance costs would make it hard for them to compete with big banks like Chase and Wells Fargo. But what about the tax gap? The Treasury Department claims they're missing out on $600 billion a year. Biden's spending bill includes $80 billion of funding for the IRS to recover some of that money, including through this bank account monitoring proposal. But some say the IRS already has the tools needed to go after tax cheats. The Wall Street Journal says financial institutions already must report interest, dividend, and investment income, and the IRS can get bank information during audits. According to Stephen Rosenthal, a senior fellow with the Urban Brookings Tax Policy Center, the Biden administration's plan makes no sense. The Biden administration believes that aggregate information for annual deposits and withdrawals will help the IRS find tax cheats. I'm skeptical. I don't think it will. And one of the reasons I don't think it will is because it's not transaction by transaction. It's just an aggregate amount, and it bears no relationship to income tax liability. Wait, 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 I think I get what you're saying. Biden and Yellen have been claiming their plan absolutely won't look at individual transactions. But maybe in the future, when their current plan doesn't work, they'll realize they have to start looking at individual transactions. After all, we've got to catch those tax cheats. But Democrats are now facing an increasing backlash to this plan. And they're rethinking parts of it, like the part where it would apply to bank accounts or transactions of $600 or more. Congressional Democrats have discussed raising that threshold to $10,000 and exempting payments from payroll processors. That would narrow the number of bank accounts affected. And Republicans have gone even further. House Republicans have introduced a bill to completely block the IRS bank monitoring plan. Of course, that's not going to pass since Republicans are in the minority. But state governments are speaking up too. 23 state treasurers and auditors signed a letter last month opposing the plan, calling it one of the largest infringements on data privacy in our nation's history. And Nebraska's treasurer is saying his state won't comply if the rule takes effect. I guess Nebraska is about to become a tax haven for the rich elite. So what do you think? Will Biden's IRS proposal pass? Should the IRS be able to monitor bank accounts? Leave your comments below. And if you like this show, please know we could not do it without direct support from viewers like you. Visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered and contribute a dollar or more per episode to help us keep the show going. So click the link below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.